Hi there, everyone. Welcome back to part two of What, what the, the Fuck. fuck? Yeah. <laughs> In stereo there with yeah. the fabulous Spanky and Tori. And I have to tell you, after part one, now I have even more burning questions. Yeah. And I was taking notes while you guys <laughs> okay, were talking. Okay. So fascinated by this. Um, but... Quote of the day. Yes, always. Quote of the day. And this quote will make more sense as we talk through a couple other things that we're going to get into as well. All right. The trouble with the laws these days is that criminals know their rights much better than they know their wrongs. I wish I knew the author of that one. Yeah. It said author unknown, but I'm going to find out because I think it's brilliant. Um, okay, so Hoyt, I'm going to pass, pass the okay. ball back to you. Let you well, do your thing. All right. Well, Recap. We, 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 left, uh, we left on a great cliffhanger. Uh, Spanky was going through her kind of exit you know, strategy or the way the events occurred. And um, yeah, why don't we just pick it right back up where we were? And um, and if you if you're if you're a little bit lost, just listen to the episode before this, and you'll be clued in. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know, let's let's pick up where we were. So I worked with this woman, Yvonne, who I had great regard for, and she took ill and passed away and was quite neglected in her the la latter part of her life, and it threw me for a loop, and I couldn't think with it. But I also well, was. Neglect, re Neglected from Scientology. Oh, so yes. let's just If someone's yeah, jumping in part yeah. two, she was a big she leader was a huge, part of yeah, Scientology. She was a very high-ranking executive in Scientology yes. and had dedicated her life to this organization and was really neglected by them when she needed them. But um, So I got irate about it and, um, and mouthy and ended up in a prison camp from where I escaped. Oh, kidnapped wow. my daughter and ran away. And I was pregnant and um, and got out with my daughter and stayed, didn't, because my, I was married, my husband was very high ranking in the legal bureau of the organization. And so he was going to lose his security clearance and he, he didn't want to disconnect from me. And I didn't particularly want to disconnect from him. So I stayed kind of following the rules as much as I could until I couldn't. So, so I stayed a member, and then, and then eventually I couldn't do it anymore. Right. He just said, "Either Scientology is the most important thing in your life, or we can't be married." And that's not something you could fake. So, wow. guess guess what? I guess we can't be married because yeah. I couldn't pretend right. any longer. And maybe explain disconnect really quick. Cause disconnect that's a, is that's just a to completely. Break ties. Break right? ties with the person who's not in agreement with your objective, which is for him, it was Scientology all the way. And if I couldn't do that, which I couldn't, I started reading other things and reading other books and he couldn't understand why I was doing that. He said, what is this question on? Why are you reading his books? Yeah. Because I want, I was so young. I really right. grew up thinking like almost literally that Hubbard invented the wheel. Right. So, um, so I, I didn't know that there were other brilliant men who had ever had a thought besides Hubbard. Right. So I started reading <laughs> like just Everything I could get my hands on, the history of arithmetic, reading all of Plato, reading all of Aristophanes because it was a critical of Plato. I wanted to understand all sides of everything, which I couldn't in right. short order, but I was trying to get as much information as I could. And my ex-husband didn't right. like that very much. She said, why didn't you do this? All you need to do is study Hubbard and that's all you need. Wow. No, it didn't work for me any longer. So okay, well, we'll, we'll, well, I want to come back so to we're that. Done. But mm -hmm. I would no, but I, I would also uh, inquiring minds want to know <laughs> what that escape looked like. I mean, that's a strong word. I use the same word. I escaped my group. So what, what were the kind of what was what set the scene? Like what, well, what was, was how, did, the, how was that I escape was on on this rehabilitation project for right. us, which was a a, a project I'd been sent on because I had been insubordinate or out of bounds of the rules. And right. I believe it's like a real re-indoctrination um, camp, which right. the Chinese communists would yeah. often use that term. And that was to really reestablish the pro thro thought process again. So maybe, maybe highlight the different types of camps again, because you've mentioned different ones. Wasn't there, there was like... Oh, there was something come to be later known as the whole, which they right. talked about in Going Clear, right. which yeah. that was at the international... Base and for the high, high executives. In Hammett. Yeah, in Hammett. In so okay. they went into something called the hole, but right. this was way decades before the hole. Okay. So this was just. You called it a prison camp. It was, well, I, in my opinion, it was yes. a prison camp. Yeah. Because it we is were, a prison we camp. We were locked yeah. up. It was the hole. And we were, right. yeah, and we were, you know, couldn't escape. And we were, 
or just washed all so, the time. So, so did you have to, how did how did you break out? Like, I mean, did you have to kind of- I had to plot an escape. Oh, wow. And um, at the time, we had to work towards having some redemption right. because we were supposed to be rehabilitated. And the first thing was like first dynamic redemption, me- meaning you yourself could get better. And then you would work towards third dynamic redemption, which is- better with the group. The third dynamic met the group. Right. So, um, so, and that was signified by a gold armband or, and the first, the first armband I think was a, a white armband, but when you go to the RPF, you have a, like a dirty gray rag. It's oh, like, okay. that's, that's wow. the first thing when you're right. in there. And then, so you get this redemption certificates or these armbands and then you get more and more liberty with each one. So I worked to get to the, the second one right. so that I could have time to get, I need, I needed to get my daughter. She was in this something called the cadet org. So I convinced my husband, well, my daughter had been very ill. So I said, I have to take her back. Then he said, you can't, you can't, you can't leave here. I said, no, I can't. I, and you know, if the bosun goes and meets me there, um, then he'll walk me. If you walk me there and bodyguard me there, then I'll get him to walk me back so I could take the baby. So we asked and they said, yes. So I I went over with him and then I said, okay, you could go along now because I see Dick is out front. He'll walk me back. And I was walk, looking out the window because I had called someone to right. say that I knew that was not a member and that worked for a big celebrity, that, but I knew her socially. And I said, please pick me up at this address on this date. At this at, time. At this yeah. time. And I just hung up. I didn't know if she answered me. I don't know if she said... Forget about oh, it. Wow. I can't. So it's whatever. A, a I just, real leap of faith. No, yeah. I, I, mean, I just called her and then said, "Do this, be this place." And I hung up. But I didn't know what she could have shown. So I kept looking out the window, and then I saw the car pulled up. I was just, I was so oh grateful, and I mean, my heart was beating so fast. And then I went downstairs, and there was the the the, the bodyguard to take right. me back, and and um and she pulled up, and I had the baby in my arms. So I said, oh, my baby's sick, and that's my, I lied. I said, yeah. that's my sister-in-law. She's going to take her to the doctor. And um, and and he said, okay. So I I opened the car door, and then I handed her the baby, and she looked at me like, what? What's going on? And she just sat the baby next to her, and I said, um, I said, oh, I just thought it. And so I got, and I stepped into the car, but left one one um, leg. Oh, excuse me. Oh, no. Um, outside the car and I said the minute I shut this door I need you to drive away as quickly as possible oh, wow. and she said she just nodded her head and so then so then I got out and I took two steps towards him and then that backed him up and then I got in completely shut the door she hit the door locks off we went people were screaming <laughs> spanky no because it's evident right. immediately what was going on oh, my and God. Um, I was so frightened I was oh, so frightened I had, you were so brave I had 40 cents mm-hmm. a baby I was pregnant I was like what what am I going to do I mean I was so freaked out but mm-hmm. I, I thought this is the only opportunity I have and I really plotted because every day I'd look and think I have to go I have to right. go it's like playing the long game right yeah. you had to really kind of wow mm-hmm. yeah so I had to figure it out and so and that was my escape well, and I'm grateful the girl who drove that car yeah. to, for my life, truly, because yeah. I couldn't have done it without her. And um, Katie, if you're listening, you're the best. Oh, and thank, she doesn't thank speak you, to me Katie. anymore, but she yeah, is great. Thank you. Yeah. Well. Well. All right. Yeah. All right. So we so right. we we got Spanky out. <laughs> all right. Uh, <laughs> let's uh, let let let's get Tori out. How did that How did that emerge? Yeah. Mine is a little darker. <laughs> I, the, cults, I don't know if you guys had this, but in, in Scientology, I think you do, where they find your buttons. Yeah, so they know what you will do and what you won't do. And I wasn't going to do anything illegal or anything like that. I was raised a Catholic, you know, mm. so they kind of got my auditor counselor to say, look, we really need your help. The, well, first of all, let me just do the earlier one. I, we moved to Clearwater, Florida, and mm-hmm. the city commissioner was trying to run for mayor. And they had people driving back and forth, up and down in front of the Flag Land Base, which is the Scientology Center, honk out Scientology, stamp out Scientology. They hate the town; just hated them, and they kind of still do most of them. And um, so this executive calls me. And, you know, I'd never been around something like that. I was like, "Oh my god, this is kind of like." Awful, you know, yeah. it was really awful. Also, they moved into Clearwater under false pretenses. They had a different oh. front. Oh, I'm really? Gonna, I'm okay, gonna, that's ahead. part of the story. So <laughs> the executive calls me in his office and he says, look, we came here on a lie. And I'm like, 
lie. We're, we're the most ethical yeah, people right, on the planet. Yeah, right. And, yeah, wait, wait a and second. He, he said, okay, here's the deal. You know, Hubbard was going to go out in Georgia and they found out that the FBI was going to plant drugs on the ship. And I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> and by then you're brainwashed enough to believe yeah. the FBI is right. like always, you're always like looking around right. for CIA, FBI, stuff like that. So I thought, okay. And he said, so we swung around from Georgia to Florida to Clearwater, bought the Fort Harrison under the church of, I forget the name, but it was another, it was another church because they didn't want to say Scientology. Right, right, right. United Churches of something. Yeah, right. United Churches of something. So anyway, they bought it. And he said, so the town knows us as liars. And this guy's program is save sparkling clear water, stamp out Scientology, vote for me. They're liars. Don't trust him. So mm. he said, so we can't fight him. You have to fight him, Tori. You have to handle this. And I mean, this was hundreds of people, you know, out in front of their thing and honking and everything. And I'm like, me? I have a brand new baby. What are you thinking? Yeah. I don't know how to do this stuff. And he said, look, I know you're good with talking to people. Just go out and talk to them. So I thought, all right, I'll give it a shot. So I went up to an older lady. She had an American flag and a you know, stamp out Scientology. And I walked up to her, I said, what are you doing? And she, and she said, Scientology is evil and started going. And, I, and my son started crying. And I said, look, you're a grandmother, I can tell. And look what you're doing. You're mm -hmm. making my son cry. That's what's happening. That's the only product here. Mm -hmm. you're, not hel you're not helping anybody. So go home. And she put down her flags and she went home. <laughs> and so I just kind of went from person to person just saying, this is my religion. Why are you doing this? Blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, long story short, he got voted out of office. So that I went from zero, because I was just a public person at this point, mm -hmm. to we moved back to LA and it was like, call Tori, she can handle anything. Mm -hmm. You know, because it was a lot, it was a big deal that I handled that. Yeah. They paid me, I think, twelve thousand dollars in training awards, which was nothing. But which pays for it, half half a course. Yeah, yeah. right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so now I'm back in LA and all these critics are showing up at all the different organizations, that's what we called them back then. Now they're churches, but they're really not churches for anybody that's watching this. I mean, they are churches, but they're, they're nothing like any church of a real church. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think they're just, just, a, just they're just, a business because yeah. you have to pay for every single level. You know, right. think of the tri triangle and every single level, including saying that you're a Scientologist now. You have to pay to say you're a member of this group that says you're a Scientologist. So it's a big scam. So anyway, they would send me out. I was pretty good at, at handling them. And they would go, they would leave. And I would go back in and I would say, what, what's the deal with you guys? Because they would always go out and go, what are your crimes? What are your mm. overts? Who did you kill? You know, that kind of thing. And people would stay all day. Oh, it's you're, like you're, sin, sin. Oh, your yeah, sins, sins, you know? Sins. Yeah, what, what have you done that's really evil? And So is that like the Catholic confessional kind of thing? Or no, no, no. These are, these are people that are... Uh, you mean what? What are the well, sins? Yeah, well, no. What are they? What they're asking people to confess? Well, just anything bad. Yeah. But they, you're not in a confessional. You're just yeah. anybody. Like, you're outside. Okay. okay. You're pick, they're picking. Oh, they're picking. It's basically to intimidate. Yeah. And right. yeah intimidate and, okay. Yeah. yeah. But it didn't work at all. And I finally met um, Laurel Sullivan. Yeah. They who also was, ask you when you're in in, right. in counseling. They ask you your sins and secrets there as well. But go ahead, honey. Yeah. Yeah. They do do that. So anyway, I met Laurel Sullivan and I asked her, I said, I don't, I don't get it. I mean, I, I was pretty successful with handling these guys and you guys, what's the deal? And she said, you were never trained in the L. Ron Hubbard PR architect, were you? And I said, no. She said, that's why you were successful. We were kicked out of every single port in the world. In the world. Wow. Right? By so, using the, the, the Hubbard PR, Hubbard tech. PR yeah. technology. Yeah. So, so there's yeah. that. So... Anyway, so I realized my success, I, this was the beginning of me kind of waking up a bit because I realized my real success was from my parents. It wasn't really Scientology. Mm. Mm. And I was on the second to the top level at this point. Which is the OT7. OT7 yeah. operating, you know, where you're supposed to be near cause over light, matter, energy, space, and time, which... Most people, you look around and we were all screwed up. They were, you know, they were, they're way worse than they were when I knew them in the 70s and 80s. Yeah. So that's sort of a waking up thing. Yeah. I had massive migraine headaches and Scientology wasn't helping it. They mm. didn't care. I was gaining weight. I gained 100 pounds. Oh my goodness. So I was 100 pounds overweight. And I kept saying, I, I have to get off this level and, and lose weight and you know mm -hmm. different things. And they said, uh, okay, continue. 
They just kept saying it for seven years. <laughs> How for nice seven of them. Years. I know. How nice and of keep, them. And, and, keep, and keep paying. And yeah. keep paying. So, so what would you say was your total bill that well, you went through? Uh, it was about a million bucks. So, so finally, my friend, the internet came around in 2000, and my auditor and then my friend, Bill Yachty, said, look, we've got to handle these people on the internet. They're, they're just tearing apart Scientology, and they're really evil, and you need to go open up this phony account because then we're going to do something. And I said, well, what are you going to do? And he said, I'm not going to tell you because if I tell you, then they'll get you in deposition and you'll have to tell. Oh. But if you don't know, you can just say, I honestly don't know. Right. And I thought, okay, that works. <laughs> so I'm out <laughs> opening these phony accounts. So and just he, what kind of accounts? They're just phony accounts. They were email oh, accounts, email accounts that, he right. could, that he could get onto the internet. Back then, this was in 19, oh, 2000. And well, it started in, in the 90s, in the right. late 90s. But the internet back then was linear. Right. So mm-hmm. it was like, Alt religion, Scientology, it was just like topic after topic after topic. And their view was if they could drive it down and on the second page, no mm-hmm. one reads the second page, which mm-hmm. is kind of true. Right. So they would just keep slamming all kinds of stuff. I didn't know this, but finally they started acting more Nazi-like and creepy. And I thought, I've got it. And they have brainwashed you into not looking at the internet. Yeah. The internet's very mm-hmm. evil. Don't look at it. It'll hurt you. You'll get Crazy. You'll get yeah. crazy. And one of our friends did go crazy. And she had a breakdown. She had a big breakdown. Because she looked at the internet? No, or no, because, no. She, she had a breakdown because they drugged her and reverse audited her. She oh. was a undercover, what do you call that? She did. She An did, informant. She did, or, she did work for them undercover. She like, right. yeah, infiltrated undercover. the FDA and, I mean, various right. government agencies wow. that she had done as a member and, and various things. But they, put her in a room and they, I mean, they just intimidated her and, and, and drug her. her ba- yeah, and yeah, she was they got also medicated. These drugs and but, but, but these are things you find out afterwards. You oh, don't, she, way you don't, after. you don't know. She didn't know it then. She didn't know. Yeah. She knew she was getting drugged. Yeah. She didn't know what, right. what, what she didn't know it was bad She didn't stuff. know, yeah, she didn't yeah. know it was a right. supplement. She was, and she was just right. told to take this. So the organization that preaches against drugs Yes, drugs Everything people. Everything that they right. preach, you know. They're, I'm just they're, highlighting. Yeah, I'm just, but yeah. also, uh, like, you yeah. find out in deposition of different people. My girlfriend said I was I was drugged. I thought uh, she was in a court case. I said, "Honey," because I thought, "Really, really, Rox, there's no way." And she said, "Spanky, I was being drugged." And surely, in deposition, one of the people that was drugging her said, "We were drugging her." I was like, "Oh my god!" Wow. She's not a crazy person because you know, of course, they want you to think right. that she's crazy. Right? You of know, course. she's that couldn't be true. And you mm-hmm. truly think because of the doctrine of the organization, it couldn't be true. Except it is true. Right? So it is well, true. And they had said to me, "Tori, don't read the internet." And I said, "And I kind of thought, okay, what's the big deal?" And they said, "You know, Nancy's jumping out the back of her windows of her house." I said, really? And they said, yeah, she's kind of going melting down. And that's because she's reading the internet and all these <laughs> evil people. And so I was like, I'm not mm, reading the she internet. She had a big breakdown. Bless yeah, her heart. She's come through it. Fear yeah, she's, she's way again. better now. She's, she's a chaplain. She's, and yeah. she's helped she with was, COVID she's, for the whole COVID thing. She's yeah, been she's, in the hospital helping yeah, people. Yeah, she works mm. at different hospitals wow. in Valley yeah, County. Really she's great. great. She's extraordinary. So she, she, they lost a good one with her. She, with, you know, a lot of, the, most people that leave are really good people. But also most of the people in, I'd say yeah. 89% are really sure. good people. Really no, good course. people. Yeah. And they're just you know, blinded they're by the lights. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But anyway, to finish it, um, so I'm opening up these phony accounts. I finally think I've got to go look. All right. And thank God that day they had Scientology had spammed this whole network, this news group with baking recipes how to bake chocolate cake and cupcakes and right. all this stuff. And in between it were people saying, I didn't say that. Scientology is changing my words. And I was like, mm-hmm. That's, those are my accounts. Mm-hmm. I opened that. They're stopping free speech. And I'm a big free speech advocate. Right. So I was like, no way. Yeah. So I called up the same guy and I said, you know, I have to go back to work. I, I really can't do this anymore. And he said, okay, fine. You know, just meet us in this apartment you know, in Glendale. And I said, okay. And That's I walk- not creepy. <laughs> no. And I walked in. It wasn't to me at, right. at, at the time. But at thought, the time, it's like, just, just meet us at this apartment in, yeah. in Glendale. Well, I yeah. knew the apartment. That's where we were working oh, out okay. of. And he said, just meet us there at night. Yeah. We, we just want to debrief to find out what happened. <clears throat> and I said, okay. And, and by now, I kind of am realizing this is coming from the head of Scientology. This mm. isn't just my friend Bill Yachty and a right. few other guys, right? I just got, it's really bad news. 
So I'm getting scared, right? So I walk in the door and here's like six big men. I mean, big. And I grew up with all big men. So I knew, you know, I thought, ooh, these, you know, this is interesting. There's not like one woman. First yeah. of all, yeah. no women. Yeah, there were no women. It was all men. It was dark. It was like really dark. And it was like sun sunset, but no, you know, there was lights, but they were very dim. Mm -hmm. right. And he wasn't there. My best friend wasn't there. Oh, and wow. neither was the guy that ran the whole thing that was actually in the Sea Org. And so they're, and usually they're like, Tori, you know, big hug. Right. And now they're like, hello, hello, hello. And I'm like, okay, something's uh -oh. very fishy here. And again, I should have just walked out, but I didn't. And in a way, I'm glad I didn't because it was really where I left that mm -hmm. night. So finally, the, da the door slams open and in is Biliotti and Gavino, the, the guy that ran it. And he goes, I warned you about her. I warned you about her. And I look at my best friend. I'm like, he warned you about what? And, you know, they just started pounding me and pounding me mentally, you know, just asking me all these questions and, you know, just mm. intimidating me. And it was just awful. And I, I stayed for maybe an hour, hour and a half. And I finally just burst out crying and I just ran out the door. And he knew he screwed up at that moment because I know him well enough. And he came running after me. He's like, Tori, Tori. I said, get away from me. Get away from me. Get away from me. And I jumped in my car. You know, just that was it. Mm -hmm. And I drove away and I didn't actually fully wake up again. I mean, this was like, that was like, that was really when I left Scientology, but I didn't really leave until I got on the internet myself. And this is a huge confusion that a lot of people on the net think because Wikipedia got it wrong that I opened, I actually did all that action that was on the internet. I did make 4,000 posts, but that was for In me. <laughs> I had already said, I'm done with OSA. I don't want to ever talk to these people again. I was like way waking up. And I thought, okay, I'm going to go meet these critics because mm -hmm. I'm scared to death of them. They've, made, they've terrified mm -hmm. me. And I thought, they, they actually are like cowboys. You know, they can say what they want. They can do what they want. They can go where they want. Mm -hmm. And whereas when you get to the top of Scientology, you can't think, you can't do things, you can't read things, mm. you can't look at things. I mean, it's the opposite of freedom, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And so I thought, I want to go meet the cowboys. So I get on the internet, but I'm too afraid to read anything, right? Oh, you're I'm, still afraid to read? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. terrifying. Yeah. So I'm just posting. If you, And you can still, in the Wayback Machine, go back to mm. alt religion yeah. Scientology and see <laughs> my posts, and they're just insane. I mean, I, I think I was Magoo 55 at the time. But, <laughs> but anyway, my dad was, I gave him that nickname because he had little tiny eyes like I do. Mm -hmm. and, he, and his football number was 44. So that's why I'm Tori Magoo 44. Uh, oh, nice. So, and, and he was, when you wake up, you can't call your friends. You can't talk to anybody. Even your spouse. You Even your spouse. Anybody. Right. So I, I well, you kind mean, of... You mean you can't talk to your friends from Scientology? Scientology. Yeah, I can't right, say right, I'm waking right. up, I'm leaving. Right. side by side into a course. Now, and we can't even speak to each other about what we're reading. Right. You can't use the words even amongst each other. Right. The, at the upper level stuff. It's crazy. Well, now, it's really now, crazy. I mean, in in my group, it was frowned upon having any relationship outside the group. Was that similar? Like, did you have, friend, oh, do you have friends at all out no, there? No, no, no. no. They yeah. cut everybody it's very off. Yeah. It's yeah. so right. insular. That's how it's the Truman Show. Because right. you're in the yeah. show or you're outside. So, yeah. Right. So, so, literally, you, you come out with virtually no safety blanket to fall Nothing. into. Yeah. Well, but I, I'm almost done with it. But, so, now I'm making 4,000 posts right. on the internet and I don't know how to format and so I only knew how to copy paste mm. and and on the thing at the time it'd be like you talk, there's a bunch of arrows, I talk, then there's right. some more arrows. No, those little arrows. Differentiating yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. who's saying what. Right. So my friend in Norway, Andreas, God bless his soul. <laughs> and he's not religious, so okay, Andreas. But anyway, I I can't ever thank him enough. He writes me a little thing and he says, Magoo. Nobody knows what you're talking about. He's a computer geek. Right. Right? And he said, nobody can follow you. You know, you, you don't know how to format. He said, so I'm going to teach you how to format. Mm. And he said, just do X, Y, and Z. And so I do it and it works. Meanwhile, this is like an evil man. Yeah, this, this is, is like the, this is like the evilest guy on the on the planet, <laughs> the right? Oh, and the, I'm the, talking the, the to the guy him. who's reaching out to you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'm like, yeah. oh my god, like it's Satan, Satan He has a website yeah. called yeah. www.xenu.net, and that is zenu.net. Zenu is their big top secret thing that you don't get till you're 
if it's a triangle up here, you learn mm -hmm. about and it. And you pay yeah. the money. Right. And it's a lot of money. So they, they don't want anybody to know about it. So he named his website that. And he's a computer geek, so he put a lot of stuff on it. So anyway, he writes to me and says, nobody can understand you. He teaches me how to format. My mother always said, if somebody's nice to you, write them a thank you note. <laughs> there's this little it. blue link, right, for the email. And I thought, well... It's really an, it's an awful thing to talk to him, but he did help me. So I click on it, and I go, Dear Andreas, thank you for helping me, Magoo. And he writes back, and he goes, Dear Magoo, you're welcome. Andreas Heldelin, his complete address, his complete phone number, mm -hmm. his complete cell phone number. And that was such a huge shock to me. You know, it's like... We were, don't use your name, don't use your address, you know, don't ever call me Bill on the phone, I'm Jack, you know, you're Mary, you know, it was just like... Covert they, everything. Covert yeah. everything. Yeah. And, and, and this is the Church of Scientology, you know, this was a part of the Church of Scientology mm -hmm. doing this with the Office of Special Affairs. So I thought, here's this guy who's the most evil guy on the planet, and he's got all his information out there, he's totally transparent. Right. So I write him and I say you know, why do you have up all this shit about my religion? And he writes me back and he says, Dear Magoo, I believe in truth. I believe in looking at both sides, which I couldn't. Mm -hmm. And I have the courage to say what I think. I don't think, I don't think Scientologists are bad. They're just misinformed. Mm. I suggest you start reading. And I literally started crying. I couldn't stop crying. It was like, that's who I was when I got in Scientology. I believed in truth. I believed right. in looking at both sides. And now here I am, like millions of dollars, you know, all mm. of our money we'd mm. given to the church. It was like all of my life, all my friends were gone. You know, it was just like, it, it was just this, this horror show of having to make a decision of all these insular Truman Show friends mm -hmm. mm. and your husband. Yeah. And my son, who I, I, I had gotten my son out already because mm. I knew a bunch of kids who killed themselves and I was really worried that Because he, being brought up in Scientology, yeah. they killed themselves? Yeah. yeah. So I took him to SeaWorld and said, if you're going to do it, let me know because I'll be there five minutes later. It's not going to be one death, it'll be two. Yeah. And he said, mm. don't worry, mom, it's not in the cards. Uh, you know, so it was great. You. But I said, if you don't want to do it, just tell me. And he said, I don't, I don't want to do it yeah. ever. Yeah. So that was it. So I said, just that's it. But anyway, just to finish this, so... Where was I? No. So, so Andreas told you what he believed in. You yeah. said that's me before, before Scientology right. about reading. So yeah. he yeah. says, read something. Yeah. I was really afraid to read, but Mary Tabioyan had up this thing. Ladies, if you're thinking of joining the Sea Org, read this. And I was. Remember, I'd spent yeah, years right. trying to get back in the Sea Org. So I open it up, and it's this horror story about this woman being forced to get an abortion. Mm. She got pregnant. And they decided no more kids in Scientology. They made her go and get an abortion. Man. Wow. And then be on post the next day working. And I just, I couldn't stop crying. And I wrote Andreas and I said, Andreas, there's no one I could talk to. I, 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 I'm just like, I don't know what to do. You know, you have to help me, please. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I have to talk to someone that's, that knows what I'm going through. Right. right. It's really, I'm sorry to cry, no. but it's oh, no, so course. awful. Thinking of her, ugh, and all these women, to find out that all these women were made to have abortions, it's just so icky. It sounds like great church, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. yeah. That's, a, that's a real church. So anyway. Of course, abortion is a big part. <laughs> yeah. He set me up. There was a, a lady named Stacy Brooks, Bob Minton, and Jesse Prince, who is a good friend of both of ours. <laughs> Bob Minton passed away, but at the time he was in Clearwater, Florida, and they had a thing called the Lisa McPherson Trust because they had, you can Google it, Lisa McPherson, I think it's dot .net. I don't it's know. It's .net or .com, but mm -hmm. it's a website telling about how she basically wanted to leave Scientology. They ended up, she's dead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was 17 days she was dead. So they yeah. started the Lisa McPherson Trust in honor of her. How and did she die? Uh, it's a long story. That's why but I'm not going to get into it. But it's from the church. Yes. The yeah, they church. took care of her. She wanted to go to the hospital. They took uh, her okay. to the hospital, took her out, said, no, no, we'll handle it. And they now have a thing where you have to sign, we call it the Lisa Clause, saying... As you become a member. As you're a member. If anything happens to you at all, Scientology will help you 
You cannot talk to your parents wow. or can take any anywhere. friends or your doctor before Scientology. Scientology is the first call on that. Wow. And, you know, again, you're like a little kid. You're yeah. like, oh, okay, that sounds good. Oh, yeah, you just sign here. Don't worry about it, Hoyt. Right. Just sign here. Mm, get these things. We'll get us. you on course. You know, we'll, mm, get yeah. you, we'll get you going on what you want we'll, to do. We'll fix you. We'll get yeah. you the help you need. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we'll get you the help you need. So, you know, so they had the Lisa McPherson Trust. And so... Andreas called Stacy. He wrote to me and he said, write to Stacy Brooks. So I write her, dear Stacy, this is Magoo. Um, you know, can you help me? And she goes, she writes back and I see this thing, Stacy Brooks. And I think, oh my God, she wrote me. I'm so excited. And she goes, dear Magoo, sorry, we can't help you. Because she asked me, who, who are you? And I right. said, I can't tell you. I can't say that. Because yeah. I didn't know if she, maybe she's in. Yeah. You know, maybe she's a covert person. Right. Right. I don't know. Yeah. And so I said, I can't, I can't tell you. And she, so she writes back and she goes, dear Magoo, sorry, we can't help you, Stacy Brooks. That's it. So wow. I always say, I felt like I was on a, and you guys probably mm. too, but when you left, it's like you're on a thousand foot mountain and all the way at the bottom, there's like this little sign that says, you might make it if you jump. Mm. Right. And mm. I jumped, and that was it. You know, then th there's a whole on on my YouTube site. I did a ten part series of escaping out and how I got in. You know, how I woke up with mm -hmm. more, much more detail, right? And then how I actually escaped out. Which they they canceled my van. I went to the airport. The airport was canned, canceled. The vice president was there. Was she said, "We know where you're going. Wow. You're not going there." And I said, and Jesse had said to me bring a phone. And I said, oh, they don't do stuff like that. And he said, Tori, we used to run these programs. We know yeah. what we're talking about. Yeah. And back in 2000, I mean, everyone now is like, bring a phone? Hello. <laughs> but back then, we just had these little emergency phones, mm -hmm. like a little flip phone. So I thought, all right, I'll bring it. I get inside when the vice president said, we know where you're going. You're not going there. I got out the phone. I called and they put Jesse on. He said, do not sit down the phone. Ever, no matter what you're doing, don't set down the phone. So I made her carry my luggage because I had to carry the phone, <laughs> right? So she's carrying my luggage. I had to get on this van and everything. And I said, Bob, I can't get rid of her. She's following me everywhere, you know, because she was writing down where I'm going. Yeah. So anyway, she, he finally got me a first class ticket. She couldn't get in there. I get on I the plane. I think I'm done. And there's only a couple more things. I go to Chicago. My husband's there. He goes, Tori, this plane. we need to go on, on, on a vacation. And mm. I'm like, right. Nobody knew what was going on. She had spoken to no one. Her flight is canceled. The van to take her to the airport, got everything, stops at all. And then she just onboards in Chicago, and there is her husband, really? Who's right. still in. Who's still in. Oh, he yeah. Just yes. appears, He's OTA. Boom. He's at the top. Oh. He just shows up as like, Oh, let's go on a holiday. Like she's yeah, let's, go, like, yeah. let's yeah. go on a vacation. And I knew, see, he didn't really ever know the dark side of Scientology. I unfortunately yeah. had kind of learned it. And I knew a dark vacation light. for them meant lock you up in a cabin and God knows what they like did. Like Lisa McPherson. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like Lisa. So anyway, for me, I just thought, no. And the other thing is this, in Scientology, you can never call the police. It's a high crime to call the police. <laughs> so... I said How to convenient him, for them. Right. So then Osa shows up. <laughs> and that's also written at all. Yeah. yeah, right. Osa shows up and I said, I thought you were by yourself. And he said, well, okay, they're here. And they give me a whole stack of papers. You need to learn who you're going to see. I said, okay, whatever. And he goes, well, I'm going with you. And I said, if you get on the plane, I'm calling the police. Nice. Because I, I really knew it would end up, they would fly in Yachty, which they did, who was mm. my best friend and right. counselor. And it would be him, mm -hmm. and they would say it's us or them. Right. And at the time, them was pretty evil still in my yeah, head. Right. Mm. And I wasn't sure if they were good people or not. Yeah. And so I thought, I can't, I'm not going to be able to make this transition out mm. if, if he's with me. Right. It's not going to happen. Yeah. So I made it out. And uh, they, were at, they, they were at the Tampa airport at 1.45 in the morning, the whole mob of people. Wow. And the police just, are there, just, they just, go, stand back. Just for you, yeah. Yeah, stand back. Wow. And everybody stand back. She has to decide. 
And, and so that my friend goes, Tori, what's going on? What are you doing? And I said, oh, let me talk to you for a minute. Now, I had, David Miscavige runs the Church of Scientology. Yeah. I had spent seven years writing him saying, this level doesn't work. Help me, get me off the level. And he, I would just get back, okay, continue, okay, continue. Yeah, like, he didn't have time for me, no. right? Yeah. So now that I'm escaping out, she goes, I am best friends with David Miscavige, and we can get anything you need. We will get it to him tonight. And I looked at the police and I went, I picked them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Yay! Yeah. So that was it. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, well, let's, let's transition to my favorite part of all this is uh, picking up the pieces as we get back into, you know, reintegrating back into the real world after being in the, in this case, a Scientology bubble, right? right? And what were the challenges you kind of faced and what were, the, what were some of the anecdotes you'd love to share? I'd love to hear well, and can I interject really yeah. quick? Because I think in this particular cult, mm-hmm. Scientology, I think out of all the cults, you guys have the hardest time integrating because of all of the tactics they use, which I'm sure you'll get into a little bit. So I know that I'm really curious about hearing that because it was hard enough for me, hard enough for Hoyt to have to integrate back into life without all of that. I mean, I had some, but nothing like what you guys yeah. go through. So, well, I, as I said, I, I got out really early on, right. much earlier than Tori. Yeah. And so, you know, we didn't have the benefit of the internet. I remember when we did Going Clear, there was a woman in the audience after we showed the film and she said, well, why would you get in when you thought Hubbard was a charlatan? And I said, <laughs> first of all, I, in my heart, I thought it was a charlatan. I what was I supposed to do? Go to the library and look at microfiche? I mean, yeah. there wasn't any information yeah. available yeah. to me. Right. Right. It was right. way None. before that. At, um, Kim Masterson said you were just all floundering around all by yourself. <laughs> but it's not, that's not <laughs> true because there were other ex members yeah. that we had to rely upon each other. Yeah, right. so I was blessed enough to have that. Um, and and Yvonne's kids. Yvonne, the woman that I so respected, her children also had been in the Sea Org since they were young, young children and worked directly with Hubbard. And they all kind of left kind of around the same time. So I had so many great people that I loved very much and that we were kind of tried to be there for one another mm. in varying degrees at different times. But um, I think I never tried to get anybody out of Scientology because I was kind of too afraid to take that on. Yeah. But I had a lot of attention to helping people with their recovery because that was the hardest part for me. Yeah. And as I said, I was still a member because I was trying to mind my P's and Q's for the sake of my husband and his security status in the organization. But once that was done, I didn't have to worry about that anymore. I, however, did want to get declared a suppressive person because mm. they make a, a very public declaration back then. They would put it in writing yeah. that you're this evil person. And I didn't want to take those risks because then I'd really lose everybody that I knew. Yeah. Um, but, um, so I still tried to be as helpful as I could even to the organization until I couldn't be, um, until I knew I wasn't a member in my head and heart any longer. And then, and then I started just trying to build a life. I had a, um, my, my marriage wasn't going to work anymore. I had to create a life for my kids. Mm-hmm. And, um, and when I left the Sea Org, because I, w- I didn't think I was going to stay with my husband. I went that night. It was scary, and I had 40 cents, and I had a boiler room suit. I was terrible. The girl who helped me escape borrowed, got some clothes that she loaned me, and um, and I had no resources, and I was so afraid to talk to my parents because I didn't want it to reflect badly on the organization. Oh, Isn't yeah. it? I was wow. still protective yeah, of them sure, all the sure. time. No, I, can't do, I can't tell them because then they'll think it's really bad. Right. Yeah. Like, oh, God. No, but that's right. We all do that. So I was very protective of them still in their image. So um, so, um, I then, but I had to create something to make a life for my kids and myself, which I I struggled to do, but I did in time. And you did in way did. I mean, she's being very humble. So what year was this when you finally? I left, I left. I left the Sea Org in, I say, class of 78, because a number of us left a graduate class of 78, but, but didn't. Then leave signed it's kind of like a two step thing. Right. So you yeah. leave you leave the organization and then the second shoe drops and you start you leave right. the mindset. And for me the It's really sh- three because it's the Sea Org. Yeah, well, yeah, 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 truly. So, yeah, so I left the Sea Org, left the Sea Org, and then started whittling away at my mindset, and then um, leaving the organization because I still wanted to help the organization (laughs) at whatever cost, and then, and then 
then I could finally wake up completely. Right. And that's how it happened for me and started building the life for myself and my kids. And um, and it mattered to me so much that they got educated and that we have the life, uh, a life. And unfortunately, they lost their father in the struggle because he has nothing to do with them. My daughter hasn't spoken to her father in like 25 years almost. Wow. But And it's a heartbreak because my kids are really extraordinary. Yeah. And they really are. They're really great. And really great. it breaks my heart that... Their yeah. father doesn't know how wonderful they are, but right. they are really wonderful, and he'd be very proud if he were able to or permitted to know them. Yeah. And um, because it's really, he's not allowed to speak to them. So um, even though he's hey, it's his personal choice, which I'm <laughs> sure it is, <laughs> um, with a little bit of duress added onto that. But yeah. um, but anyway, so I I made a life for us, and I'm yeah. so grateful. Yeah, and you did. and so you know, we have, I own my home and cars, mm-hmm. and everything is kind of. I'm grateful that I have a life. And then, and then, when did you start kind of talking out about? The- I started talking out as soon as I could, wow. but I, but yeah. under every kind of name, you, I called myself Marina del Rey. I called myself <laughs> Beverly Center. I called myself <laughs> anything I could think of, so um, so that I wouldn't be recognized. Um, so really because, because I think I think that's such an important part of the healing process, and I know. You know, Shelf's just going through this literally, you know, in real time right now. Yeah. Because, you know, she never really was able to talk out about these things. And, sure. and it is My incredible. ex is still in the group. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. incredibly well. healing. Oh, that's big. Yeah. It's yeah. really yeah. hard. Trying to co-parent is oh, it's a, a nightmare. It's yeah. really yeah. hard. It's a tough one. Impossible. Really hard. Yeah. Yeah. Are your children out? They actually were never in oh, good. because I, one of the main reasons I left was so that they wouldn't be indoctrinated. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah. Good for you. And so I took them in the right middle there. of the night. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. yeah right there. I'm right. right? There. Yeah. Same thing. Single yeah. mom had to create a life. And yeah. Yeah. Was usually a choice diapers sure. or food for me. Yeah. Oh, we'll go yeah. with the diapers. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. It's just crazy. Yeah. Oh, and there yeah. were times my, my kids were hungry. I mean, yeah. it was yeah. us too. We were poor, you know, and I'm so grateful. The Jewish Federation, who really helped us so much in so many difficult wow. times, that I got. They, at that time, they had something called the Cult Clinic that was brilliant, and they helped so many people. And they would, you know, they'd help with groceries. They'd help me so much. Oh, I mean, I, thank goodness. I, I, there's, I, there's, I can't say enough good things about yeah. them. Right. But they were shut down, of course, by the organization. Of course. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, because they got, um, they were funded by the United Way, who, who. The organization put pressure on them to pull the fall date funding, so mm. they lost the funding, so they wow. couldn't do the cult, um, um, the cult clinic that they had any longer, which is a tragedy because they really helped so many people. It was called the cult clinic. The cult clinic at the Jewish Federation. Uh, that's what we called it. I guess that's yeah. yeah. And, and then the organization would what would, would put out flyers about. The Kike Clinic. I mean, just oh, doing geez. awful oh, things God. to attack the Jewish Federation. Just dreadful. They were just. And awful. again, like, like people like me, I never knew that. I, this is the first sure. time I've ever heard that. Oh, yeah. it's so it's gross. not like it gross. it's not like no. every Scientologist knows all these creepy no, things. No, it's truly no. an organization that is completely clouded in darkness and secrecy yeah. Yeah. on every level. Yeah. Whether it's a, what Scientology is itself, you don't know that. You don't know their actions. You don't know the dirty tricks. You don't know anything. You're like completely in the dark. Well, My husband was in the legal bureau, so I had inkling of a lot of their right. because right. he would tell me, "Oh, you know what's happening to this person, that person." And I would be shocked because sometimes these are people who are dear to me, but uh, and it was shocking. But that's how it. That's but, what you but, had to yeah, do to yeah, save your, well, yeah, when, to save yeah, your church or whatever. Right? No, we're fighting for the cause. I yeah. mean, people. It, it, sure. it's, it's like the laws of the world don't apply to me. You know, it's yeah. it's really we did we did all sorts of shady stuff in I our know. group. You know. So Tori, let's hear your story. What is, what is my story? What are well, we you know about your recovery, pro- your, your recovery the process. Recovery, yeah. Yeah. yeah, once once you get out and trying to make sense of things and. and okay, uh, so for, so for me, I had said I'm not going to speak out. Right. I'm not going to say anything. I'm right. leaving under the radar. That's it. Just going to quietly quietly you know, leave. Slip away. And if they had been smart at all, and this is true for every <laughs> ex Scientologist right. and probably every cult member, they would have just let us be, yeah. and mm-hmm. I would have gone on with my life, and that would have been it. But no, I had flown to Clearwater. That's their big headquarters in, in it's, it was Florida, one of them right. in yeah. Florida. And uh, so I'm with these guys, the Lisa McPherson Trust, and I'm answering the phone. And all these parents are like, I can't talk to my kids. Like, Spanky, could you please help me get my kid out? You know, these are people mm. where the children are in. Yeah. And so I'm talking to them and just hearing all this stuff. And I had said to Bob and Stacy, I'm, I'm not going to pick it. I'm, mm. I'm not going to speak out. I'm right. just here, you know, that's it. Right. So 
Anyway, long story short, Bob is a multimillionaire. And he and they lived in kind of a, you know, kind of an almost empty house with a bedroom, a, a guest room bed, their bedroom, mm -hmm. and a table. That was it. Okay. And, and I kind of grew up around money, and right. I was like, wealthy people don't live like this. Yeah. You know, this, and I told him that. I said, this is bullshit. Because then I thought, maybe these guys are Osa. Yeah. You know, maybe they're just pretending they're oh, getting right. people out. Yeah. You know, and, and mm. I really got scared. And, I, and so I confronted him. I said, look, you know, this, what's going on here? You know, this can't possibly be your life. And he said, okay, we're going up to New Hampshire tomorrow. And he got tickets and we all flew up to New Hampshire. And you didn't know what you were going to? You disagreed? No, yeah. yeah. I mean, I didn't have any choice. What right. am I going to do? I already lost all my friends and my husband. I right. got to kind of, you know, right. and I, I trusted them. I right. did at this right. point. I really did. They, they were good. <clears throat> but it was just, that was one fishy thing that right. I was, it was just a little bit in my head of like, right. maybe these guys are faking it. Right. right. So he flies us up there and um, he, he wanted me to see his house, his home. And here's this beautiful three-story home in New Hampshire with just, I mean, it was just fabulous. Right. You know, and just grounds forever. And, and Mark Bunker made a video called Magoo Dancing in Boston. <laughs> And, and it is a great video. It's one of my favorite videos. It really is. It's really fun. But what happened was we, we saw the house, everything else. We hung out there for a couple of days. And then we're going back to Boston. And he says, well, just so you know, we're going to pick it in Boston. And I said, I'm not picketing. <laughs> I told you I'm not going to pick it. And then I thought, Tori, you're such a flake. You know, you know so much information. And now you've talked to all these parents that have lost mm. their kids. You got to do something. So I said, okay, I can't pick it with you guys because they're the big SPs, right? right? But I'll go talk to the org. I'll, I'll go inside. So just drop me off in front. Right. So they drop me off and I go in and I go, I'm a Scientologist. And I said, I don't even out two weeks. So I said, well, actually, I'm not really a Scientologist anymore. I left. So you better call HCO, which is what they do. If there's anything bad, it's called HCO Hubbard's Communications Office. That's yeah, good. a lot of offices in your group. Yeah, they have all kinds of things <laughs> like that. All kinds yeah. of offices. It's all part of the mind control. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, they. I said, you better call them. And, and she said, well, I am them. And I said, okay, good. Well, then give me a tour of the org. And at that time, this girl was in the, in the reception selling books. And she knew me, Carolyn Percy. And she goes, Tori, hi. And I said, Carolyn. And they have a thing called What is Scientology, which they got out to all the senators and congressmen and libraries and everything. And now in 2000, they redid it. And I'm in the original What is Scientology. And now they redid it with a new photograph of me and you know everybody that was in it. But it's much smaller. It's a little magazine. They were going to mm -hmm. get that out everywhere. And she goes, you're in the book. And again, I have that Homer Simpson moment of like, this is the first and last time you will ever see this book, Dory. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, can I get a copy? And she goes, sure, take it. And I said, thank you. And she goes, and then she hears that I left and she goes, well, did you route out? Which is their whole, you have to do a whole big long routing for them. Steps. And yeah. I said, no, I didn't. And she goes, well, you need to. And I said, okay, well, you need to look on the internet. <laughs> and I'm going to go outside and the rest of it's all on that video. Right. Yeah. But it was the beginning that day, I still wasn't speaking out. Yeah. And then this, it, this isn't on the video, but I got hot and I said to Bob, Bob, I'm really hot. And you do hear him on the video go, it's hard work being a suppressive Tory. <laughs> <laughs> so he said, just go over to the van, turn on the air conditioning. And this guy was filming me from across mm -hmm. the street and he just kept filming me mm -hmm. and filming me and filming mm -hmm. me, yeah, you know what creepy. I mean? And it was yeah. like, and I kind of waved at him like, hey man, I get it. You know, I was in two weeks ago. I, yeah. I, I know the drill. Yeah. Wow. And he just kept coming across the street and coming across the street. And all of a sudden he put his camera on the window. And that was it for me. I said, that's it. I wasn't going to speak out, but I am now. Right. And you see me come back and go, Andreas. You know, <laughs> I'm just sort of like, I became an activist. That yeah. was it. And I've just been actively, you know, I've picketed, I've done speeches, I've talked to groups, I've done all, I have all kinds of fun stories on that, but they're long. But um, also when you, when you experienced enough of the harassment, because mm -hmm. I had been high ranking within the organization right. when I left, um, and then to have people go through your garbage and have your children constantly photographed with telescopic lens cameras and, and being followed. And my kids were very traumatized by this because they were little and yeah. they didn't understand. I didn't even realize till Alex was doing the documentary. And my son said, 
oh my God, because we thought we were going to die. I said, Travis, you really thought you were going to die? He goes, Mom, when you're a kid and you don't know what's going on, yeah. Yeah. And you know, your Probably mom is so. always frightened and there's always process servers coming right. out and, you don't, and you're just a little kid and you go, and you're being followed and you think, oh my God, my mother's in danger. We must be, in the, we did think at, some, at various points, oh my God, they could kill us. We didn't know, we were just little kids. Right. And I said, oh my God, he's right. Because they, they, they knew they had been traumatized by all this. Um, I didn't know to that degree, but... But truly, you know, having people go through our garbage and slice my tires and just awful yeah, they things do. all they the time. Yeah, they do. They slash my tires. And too. it's like, and especially is this when, called fair game? Is yes, that the yes, process? Yes. Okay. Yes. It's it's just it's called you can do anything to anyone. You can lie, cheat, steal, destroy someone. Injure by any that's means. The, that's the by quote. any means. And it's all right. fair game. Wow. Yeah, and 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 you should. And what a only, wonderful church. It's so it's so it's so godlike, isn't it? Right. <laughs> <laughs> They're very holy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So um, it's uh, so it was that it was just got to be a bit much. Yeah. So uh, yes, I did speak out, but always I had a very healthy respect for how dangerous and evil they could be. Yeah. Right? So I was very careful because I didn't want to put my kids in more danger or myself. So I was really under and the. She radar. left sure. years before me, so right. it was it was kind of different by the time I mm -hmm. left. Yeah. So she, you know, where, she oh, well, kind and, of and it's more different. It's even more different now, right? I mean, yeah, how, how, how would you guys assess the current situation? And now there's no people in it. They don't do auditing. They don't do anything that they oh, used wow. to do that Hubbard started yeah. the whole wow. thing with. They, it, they're literally just a real estate organization. Yes, they're that buying was my buildings. question. It's a money grab. It's just now it's just, just straight money. up. That's it. Real estate. And, and yeah. people with lots of money give them like five hundred million dollars. That's just a give. Yeah, just a donation. Yeah, it's just donation. A way that's to, still happening. The but donations. But it, it's a state. It's a, a, a it's tax write-off. Tax write-off. Tax yeah. write-off. And and why not? If there is any wealthy people watching this who have done this, please give your money to a real charity that actually helps people. Because, because they this don't. is this is organized organized crime. It's organized crime, right. right? Yeah, and they're hurting so many. And we don't care about the doctrine, as they say in the anti-cultural. Right. It's not the creed; it's the deed. Right. It's so true. It's not what they believe. You could want to eat fifteen peanut mm. butter sandwiches a day, a day, pray to wooden tables. I don't care. Whatever blows your skirt yeah. up, you do that. Right. But it's the violation of human rights that's yes. a problem. Yes. And it's so, ironic that they have a big human rights. Right. Thing, the human yeah. rights. Right. I was just going to say it's, that. It's so not. True. I mean, no, hypocrisy, uh, they yeah. have the these they, these front groups with wonderful titles that sound very altruistic. But hello, not so much no. in practice. Right. That's not you know, at all. So, in practice. Um, and if they didn't, if they didn't hurt people, if they weren't, I don't know. If they're still forcing abortions, but I don't know. I don't know that there's even still an RPF. Right. But I do know that there are still enough violations of people's civil rights that it's a problem, and it was a problem then for me. And what I went through was awful, but it went. Thousands and thousands of people have been through that yeah. and much worse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, right. so uh, you know, I remember somebody, I have a friend in New Mexico, Jennifer, she said, Spanky, I read your story today in the New York Times. I said, what? Because this was many years. I said, she goes, no, it was... It wasn't your story, but it was exactly like your story. Right. I said, and you know, and I read it and I said, oh, that's my friend Claire. I said, you know what's sad? I said, it translates to nothing. Mm. So it's a serious story, and what she went through is awful, and it's very similar to my story. But you know what? Unfortunately, nothing comes from it. Yeah. So it's a heartbreak to me. Right. You know, that people go through the same thing, and in many, Claire went through much, much worse. Yeah. And, and and it translates to nothing telling the story. So hopefully, I don't the think that's true. I don't think it's nothing. Well, I think it's okay, very but important. But I'm saying that government should get out there well, back that, ends and do something. Yes, but as far what, as government. That's what's your guys' opinion? I know all of Leah's work. I'm familiar with it. She's a fearless. Yes. She's what's your What's fearless. your opinion or your assessment of where things are at? Because me, I've heard this story. I have had friends in it, but sitting with you, and I was telling Hoyt mm. at the break. I'm like, it's hard for me to not get really angry. You know, I, I've watched it on TV and I and I feel heart sick. Sure, it makes me upset. But sitting yeah. with you guys, I'm like, why is this still happening? Yeah. Like, I know, yeah. like, I know. Yeah. What? So, what is your guys' opinion or assessment of? Will the government ever step in there? Because it's this is a real estate business. It, it is, is not a church. It is. And the human trafficking, the they RICO, right they're in violation yeah. of RICO. They do. I mean, do you guys, can you see it ever in your opinion? I know none of us are lawyers here or, you know, can I see the future. I tell you, in terms of, 
I there were numerous times, especially I have a long history of thinking, okay, this is the end for them. You know, when the FBI raid happened, right. yeah. I thought, right oh, now, now Lisa they're going McPherson. down. Yeah, and right. then and then Don. Lisa dies. I thought, oh, that's it, that's it for them. You know, and then every all and then these Miscavige's big, wife goes missing. Yeah, then that'll be Shelley Miscavige, yeah. and you know, and Mark comes out, Mark Headley and Claire. I think, oh, this is it. No, it continues, it continues. So I don't know. I kind of lost hope, and yeah. that it'll ever end. Do you think? But, here's, oh, but let me just say one thing. Because it, it, it has ended as far as... Some of it has. Some let of me the just, practices. Let me just say, the, the majority of the successful things that got people in mm. is over. They're not doing that. So they can buy all the buildings they want and put Scientology. It's like Trump, you know, Trump Towers and all this. Okay, so what? <laughs> you know, after a while, people go, okay. And for the Trump fans... Read both sides. Or, or, yeah. or the, who are the Saker family? Mm. You know, my friend was in, in London, you know, the, the people who, who had started the whole um, OxyContin yep. thing, oh, right. and the Sacklers. That's yep. And so he was in their building, and he said, and a huge building in London, but this, the name, and he said, I guess you guys are going to take the sign down. They said, we can't. We were donated the building uh, only on the... On the um, on the contract? Uh, yeah, on the agreement that we keep the name up. Wow. And so we had this rebuilding. Mm. So I thought, oh, that's just, and they said, we'd love to take it back, but we can't. Right. So other than blowing up the building, which they don't want to do that. Yeah. Right. Because it's it's a prime piece of real estate that they get to be in for nothing. So I said, oh, my God, that's so difficult. But that's the same kind of thing. So they've got a lot of buildings with their name. But but I do think, I think you're right. I mean, somehow, some way, uh, you know, I hope and pray, and I know people are working on it. To really finally, you know, get the IRS. I think the IRS are key in this because yeah. they are making money every day, yeah. and they're under the guise of a church, so they don't have to pay. You know, they're. Mm -hmm. they're well, I, I think I think the slaves. tricky part of it is where um, you you go after one church, then all churches become that's under the, the microscope. See, that's mm -hmm. the thing, and and you know, speaking quite you know honestly. There's a lot of shady things that the Catholic Church that's does, right. and, and so it's right. so there's there's a lot of and there's incentive. a lot of money. Lot, lot more of, transparent. There, there's a lot and of and they've also owned a lot. Right, of this. but there's yeah. a lot of yeah. incentive. Like we don't want to that's open this point. can of worms. So you know, yes, Scientology, but let's just we don't want to open this as a subject that can maybe reflect back on other churches. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and let me so just I, say I, this because yeah. when I first left in 2000, we went to a convention and it was all these different cults, right? Right. And we met all kinds of people and spoke, blah blah blah. The last day. Now this is in. 2000, there are two little young girls, and they talked about being locked inside of a barrel for two weeks. Oh no God. one would let them out. And I looked at Stacy and I said, How could this possibly be in America? These people are in mm. Ohio. I, ju I, I, I just mm. couldn't even imagine it. It's mind boggling. And she said, You know what it is? It's our country was founded on religion, separation so, of church and state. That's right. So it's kind of like, you know they get that they get by because yeah. if they're a religion, you know. But these are hu I say these are human, mm -hmm. and so does everyone that knows anything about cults. Go, they're human rights violations, yes. and yes. that we human need to separate yep. that out. Okay, they're the religion. Fine, they can believe what yeah. they want, yeah, but the human rights Great violations point. they cannot yeah. keep yeah. doing. Yeah. Right, it's not um, right. Was your organization a church as well? No, no, no. We were very small. You know, but you know, but I mean, yours, I'll, I'll yes. I mean, the way the way I look yeah. at this is um, clearly, if no one talks about it, nothing changes. Right. Sure. But if we keep talking about it, there's yeah. always mm -hmm. a chance, and so yeah. that's mm -hmm. why you never know. Yeah, who you're and that's why we got the yeah, that's is tremendous. She's had a great platform, yeah, great audience, and she is. This girl is fearless and she's courageous as yeah. all hell, and I love her to death. And, I do too. Yeah. and Rinder yeah. as well, we adore them and we're grateful for yeah. everything that comes out of their mouth because totally. they're really helping in such a big way. And I, I totally agree with that. I love what they're doing. But my thing is, and I've said this since I way be, you know, that I really think it's a combined effort. Sure. Because yeah. there are people that, you know, years before either one of us right. said mm -hmm. a word, kind of were out the torch, right. speaking out. Right. You know, starting with Jerry Armstrong, yeah. who right. worked for L. Ron Hubbard and, and was, was writing his biography. Before, I mean, yeah. So I was very, you know, I know Jerry very well. And so, and he did a lot. He knocked down a lot of drawers and yeah. he opened a big way. And so, and even though I was speaking, I was, I was speaking to, to, Tony Ortega, years right. before he oh, came to oh, know of Tori. Wow. And so then he followed Tori's 
Right. Like her story completely and carried her whole escape right. story. And, and at the time it was LA. Yeah, the New Times LA. The New Times LA. Oh, right. yeah. And it was great. And I sent it to a number of people that I wanted to help them from. Remember from, Rosie? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so I, I saw Rosie on it and t- she was talking about Tom Cruise and I called Spanky and I said, she's going to, they're getting her. They're getting her. And Spanky said, I'll send her the New Times LA, yeah, your and article. I sent her books and, oh, and wow. she. And, yeah. And she called. She emailed me and she said, this is Ro. Yeah. And I said, how do I know you're Ro? You could be the Office of <laughs> yeah, Special right. Affairs. <laughs> Call me. And she yeah. called me up. We yeah. talked for two and hours. And I talked to her for a long time, but under a different name because I was yeah, afraid. Right. Sure. I was so afraid. Sure. I was still so afraid right. because I knew what they would do. So, so. so on that note, before we have to close out, why do you guys think that Tom Cruise and John Travolta stay? Do you think they have any inkling? They're not dumb humans. I mean, do you think they're just completely brainwashed? I think at that level of um, notoriety, mm-hmm. you get it's a different treatment you get. Oh, I knew that. They yeah. are treated like rock oh, stars. Oh, my God. And yeah. tr- to have people fawning over you and being able to activate any segment of society in the world yeah. by a snap of your right. We need... 10,000 people to show up here. We need that you can actually mobilize people mm-hmm. like right. your fan base. Let's say their Scientology fan base. It's a very significant part of your fan base. But you can motivate them and dictate them wherever you want them to go. Mm-hmm. So, But you have that kind of power when you're when you have that kind of altitude within the organization. So their experience in Scientology has been entirely different than oh, most totally other people. Awesome. So it's, it's almost yeah. like a whole oh, different yeah. 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 They have a paradigm. different parking, you know, to go into right. Celebrity Center. They have their own entrance, which they showed me. Mm-hmm. They have their own course room. You know, they they're, they they can be like completely there, separate. But, right. but I also, I would like to say that I there, there are two, and I know you know this, they're two very different people. Mm-hmm. I mean, Tom Cruise is mainly like soldered to David, David. Miscavige. And I think he's hooked on that power. Yeah. Right? You have like, you know, how great he is. And, and, and same with Miscavige being hooked on Tom's power, I would right. say. V- vice versa. Power. Yeah, mm-hmm. vice versa. But I think there's that. But John, I honestly think years ago has sort of on his own not left the church, but he's he's not really a, a big Scientologist. Right. Not really. And, and, and uh, so I think both of them I, I agree. It's the red carpet treatment around the world. I mean, to be a celebrity, you have to work hard. It's, mm-hmm. it's not an easy street. And anybody can take over and then you're nothing. So this way with Scientology, as long as they stay in the Truman Show, they're going to be celebrities for the rest <laughs> right. of their lives. Yeah. They don't have to do a thing except say, I'm Tom Cruise, by, uh, I'm John Travolta. And, 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 and I don't point. know Tom Cruise at all. I, I've never met him or... but. John Travolta I knew quite well, and he's so he's so good. He's yeah, such, he really is. He's an extraordinarily good human being and a smart guy and and a good heart, a good kind human being. Yeah, he's so a good guy. It's hard to believe, but it's I do understand that his you know his wife was there, his his children, and he lost his son. Now he's lost his wife, and I think he's he's kind of. They, I'm sure they gave him a lot of help in those mm. difficult times, which yeah. they will be there if you need them to be, yeah. and with services and unless so on. Unless you're sick. Yeah, well, uh, yeah. unless you have, well, unless you're like us. Well, you and, two and are <laughs> celebrities in the cult survivor world, and I yes. can't thank you enough for coming well, on board. Well, thank you for having me. Oh, great absolutely. You. really great. great. You're welcome here yes, anytime. Thank you. And uh, yeah, let's just you know keep the conversation I going. I never met and keep, earlier. You know, we'll keep talking about these things because, like I said, nothing changes if we don't talk. So yes. I agree. Let's I keep agree. the conversation I'm going. Thanks for you guys for yeah. Oh, and thank you for the guys that are yeah. Yeah. helping oh, put it yeah. on. Thanks, staff. Guys. Thank you. And you're so nice too. Yes. Yeah. Well, sir. shall we give us our quote close, and wrap things close up? Close us out, yeah. and, and we'll probably have you guys back. By the way. <laughs> Would love to have you back. I think there's more to talk about here. We have nothing else to say. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've got a lot more to say <laughs> for sure. Okay, I will. I will definitely close this out with our our quote, which I'm going to need my glasses for. Okay. The trouble with the law these days is that criminals know their rights better than they know their wrongs. By an unknown author. How perfect is that quote? Boy, for is that how we perfect? Just for circled now. back to that, yeah. Mm. And Scientology definitely, they know their their legal rights, and they mobilize those and use those like nobody's business. And All oblivious right. Oblivious to their wrongs. Mm. What was that? I said, and oblivious to their wrongs. Oblivious yeah, to their wrongs. Exactly. Yes. Um, thank you so much. 
I uh, can't thank you guys enough. This has been very enlight- enlightening, and my my brain is really going right now, thinking about all sorts of things. <laughs> Are you Focus. still mad? <laughs> I am still a little bit mad. I'm just, I'm just going to say I, I will Did process you get your through questions answered? I, I understand. Some of them. Okay. So I said, I have to have you guys back. Anyways, thank you so much for listening and watching, yeah. and make sure to guard your hearts and your minds, as no one else but you should have control of these. We'll see you next Good. time. Good.